with more than 20% of the Earth's available surface freshwater flowing through its rivers, streams, and lakes. The Great Lakes Basin is an unparalleled natural resource. Vast networks of rivers and streams, and thousands of inland lakes provide ample recreational opportunities to the outdoor enthusiast. Whether it's fishing for trout in small headwater streams, or steelhead and salmon in large rivers and in the Great Lakes, the region supports a thriving fishing and outdoor recreational industry. However, the Great Lakes are vulnerable to a variety of threats such as the introduction of non-native species. Over 184 non-native species have been discovered to date, with one of the most recent being a worldwide invader known as the New Zealand mud snail. This aquatic invader has infiltrated the Great Lakes region and is spreading at a rapid rate. What does a New Zealand mud snail look like and how do you tell them apart from our native snails? Well, the New Zealand mud snail is really small. It ranges anywhere from four to six millimeters in length or about an eighth of an inch. They appear dark brown in color. They have five to seven whorls or spiraled segments of their shell. The opening of the shell when pointed towards you is located on the right side. These critters are known as herbivores and detritivores, meaning that they like to eat leaves, algae, and other organic matter. You can find them in all types of habitats, but especially in the slow areas that accumulate leaves and other organic materials. The New Zealand mud snail, originally from New Zealand, is a worldwide invader. It was first discovered in the United States during the 1980s in the Snake River of Idaho, and has been rapidly spreading across the country, with some of the most recent findings occurring in the Great Lakes region. Even though we've known of the presence in the Great Lakes proper since the early 1990s, it wasn't until 2015 when we first discovered them in our river systems here in Michigan. Since then, the New Zealand mud snail appears to be spreading fast. Once introduced, the New Zealand mud snail is capable of rapid population growth. These populations can potentially monopolize ecosystem resources and outcompete native macroinvertebrates. Trout have been known to feed on New Zealand mud snails, although snails often pass through undigested, offering minimal nutrition. These effects may potentially impact our high-quality trout streams. Our goal is to minimize the risk of spreading New Zealand mud snails into other parts of a river or into uninvaded rivers. Remove mud and debris, visually inspect, and treat gear with a disinfecting agent. As part of a research project focused on determining effective measures for New Zealand mud snail decontamination at Oakland University, Formula 409 antibacterial all-purpose cleaner was found to be effective at killing New Zealand mud snails on waders. As anglers and conservationists, we want to do our part to prevent the spread of this invasive species to help maintain the health of our freshwater resources in the Great Lakes region. How can we do our part in preventing the spread of New Zealand mud snails into other water bodies? Step 1. When getting out of the river, be sure to stomp off your boots to help remove any mud or organic debris from your waders. Step 2. Visually inspect your boots and waders while using a brush to scrub off any remaining debris. Step 3. If you are going to continue fishing throughout the day, we recommend spraying your gear and waders liberally with a disinfecting agent such as Formula 409 and letting them sit for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, rinse your gear off with clean water away from the river to avoid the disinfecting getting into the water. If you are done fishing for the day, spray, rinse, and let your waders dry completely. Oakland University, Trout Unlimited, and other partners are working to monitor spread and understand the potential impacts of the New Zealand mud snail in the Great Lakes region. Project funding was provided by the Michigan Invasive Species Grant Program. If you're interested in learning more or to get involved in the project, you can contact these resources.